presents College Football. The Auburn Tigers are perched atop the SEC. But Coach Pat Dye has his eagle eye looking for number one in the nation. They've gotten there with one of college football's perennially tough defenses. And with an attack led by quarterback Reggie Slack. In their first two games, the Tigers have amassed over 1,000 yards in total offense and are standing tall for their first tough test of the season. Tennessee Volunteers were among the top-ranked teams in preseason. But legendary coach Johnny Majors has to be concerned about his team's miscues this year. They have been frustrated, but still have potent weapons in quarterback Jeff Francis and tailback Reggie Cobb. It's one of college football's classic matchups, Tennessee versus Auburn, here on CBS. Sports welcomes you to college football 1988. Here in the rolling plains of eastern Alabama, Jordan Hare Stadium rises like some gigantic exclamation point, emphasizing the significance of college football in this part of the country. On Saturdays in September, when it is filled, and it will be today, it becomes the fifth largest city in the state of Alabama. Today, the site of Tennessee against Auburn. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Vern Lundquist, and welcome to Auburn, Alabama. We do have 85,000 and change on hand today at Jordan Hare. That's because the Southeastern Conference schedule is now in full swing. And Tennessee, Alabama, Auburn has traditionally been an early season litmus test as to how far the SEC is going to go. This year, well, who knows? Tennessee comes in a very disappointing 0-3. They were defeated by Georgia, surprised by Duke, and run over by LSU last week. As for Auburn, they come in 2-0 and and rank 4th in the country, but they really haven't been tested yet in wins over Kentucky and Kansas. I'm working again this afternoon with Pat Hayden. Pat, we had a chance to talk with Pat Dye. There was a little nice look in his eyes. He said he thought that this Auburn team might become something special. Well, if they become special, it's going to be because of their defense and primarily their defensive line for them. They're down three of Tracy Rocker. Ron Stallworth and Benji Rowland, the guys right down there in the middle of that defense, are the best you're going to find in the, the country. And in this conference, you have to stop the run, and that's what those guys do. Now, on offense, Reggie Slack will start at quarterback. He, Jeff Berger, graduated a year ago. A very strong arm. Pat Dye thinks he can be the best passer that he has had at Auburn. And Vern, even though Tennessee is 0-3, I think this is a re his first real test because of the tradition of the Tennessee-Auburn game. The Tennessee Volunteers were a preseason pick in the top 20. Many thought they would contend for the SEC championship. Championship. They come in with an 0-3 record for the first time in 26 years. What's happened? Well, it's really been the defense, burn, and the problem has been really youth on defense. They only have three seniors who start on defense. They have not tackled well. And this defense really hasn't rallied around the ball carrier as Tennessee defenses of old. But on offense, there are some good points. Reggie Cobb and their quarterback, Jeff Francis, are game breakers. And you're going to need guys like that in this game. Jeff Francis has the kind of arm where you can go downfield, come up with some big plays. And in a game, even while you're undermatched, if you have a quarterback who gets the ball downfield, come up with some big plays, you have a chance. Pat, in their history, they've only won one time here. Can they win today? They can't have any turnovers, and they have to be very physical. We have been joined by Pat O'Brien. He'll be with us shortly, but right now, let's go back to our New York studios and our college football host, Jim Nance. All right. Auburn University, one of the few schools in the country still on the quarter system, and because of that, classes just started this week. The campus is alive once again, and many of those 20-plus thousand students are on hand here at Jordan Hare this afternoon giving Auburn its largest crowd in the three home games it has played. Open the season against Kentucky, won that 20 to 10. Last week, a laugher against Kansas, 56 to 7. It was 42 nothing at the half. And today, they face 0 and 3 Tennessee in what has traditionally been a very critical Southeastern Conference game. And Pat O'Brien, who's with us, was also in the Tennessee locker room. Pat? All right. 
Bryce Byrne, thank you. In fact, I've spent about the last half an hour with these gentlemen here, and I've been in a lot of locker rooms in my life, and this one reminded me one of one before a championship game. Of course, this is not a championship game, but for Tennessee, it is their season. Coach Majors went over the normal things to do in a game like this, hustle, physical, execute, poise, but then he said something that caught my ear. He said, you boys are swapping a day in your life for this day. He said they have nowhere to go but up. So we will see how the Tennessee Volunteers do today as they go onto the field to meet Auburn. Let's go upstairs. The Volunteers winless. Losses to Georgia. Loss to Duke. And a loss to LSU. They have a sense they're going to play well today. And Johnny Majors, when we talked to him on Thursday, maintains an optimistic attitude. Now in his 12th year, runner-up to the Heisman Trophy in 1956 and one of the true legends in Tennessee football history. And a team like this can be awfully dangerous, particularly when you have some talent on offense like Jeff Francis and Reggie Cobb. At the other end of the stadium, Pat Dye, the Auburn Tigers, fourth ranked in the country, defending SEC champions, facing what could be their first real test this afternoon. Here they come. afternoon the ninth time under Pat Dye Auburn against Tennessee will be back with a kick right after these messages CBS Sports presents college football live from Jordan Hare Stadium in Auburn Alabama it's the Tennessee Volunteers versus the Auburn Tigers today's CFA game is sponsored by new extra gold draft in bottles and cans the one with a full tilt taste. Owens Corning, our building products put your house in the pink. And by Toyota, there's quality. 87 degrees this afternoon. It might reach 95, the humidity of 70%, which makes it feel a little bit like a sweetie sauna here in Auburn, Alabama. And the forecast for partly cloudy. Auburn won the toss, so that means Chip McCallum will kick off to Alexander Wright. And Wright has 4-3-4 four, four speed in the 40. Wright will also open at a wide receiver this afternoon. We're underway. Squib kick. James Joseph chases it out of bounds. And there's the flag. Reggie Slack in his junior year will open at quarterback for Auburn. He will be joined by Vincent Harris and James Joseph, who had 83 yards on two carries a week ago. The receivers, Alexander Wright. Laurie Tillman will not suit up today. He's been bothered by a hamstring. He's not in uniform. Freddie Wagan is the other wide receiver, and the tight end is Walter Reeves. The tight end for Auburn, or rather the uh, center for Auburn, John Hudson gets his first start today. He's been injured the first two games. He is flanked by Stacy Dunn and Rodney Garner, who graded 100% last week in the win over Kansas. The tackles are Jim Thompson, perhaps the best in the line, and Rob Selby, a sophomore. Now let's try to kick off again this time from the 30. And Vern, this Auburn offense has been one that's developed from a running team two years ago, pretty much to a passing team. McCallum, this time right down the middle, right at the four. Wedge in front. Down at the 35-yard line. Tackle made by Sean Walker, a 32-yard return to open the game. Defensively for Tennessee, and they have had problems. Martin Williams had nose tackles. He's flanked by Charles McCray and the best lineman, Marion Hobby. The outside linebackers keep the long in all-conference selection. Shazan Bradley, a true freshman. And Brian Kimbrough and Tracy Hayworth on the outside. Secondary in a moment, first and ten. This is Joseph in motion. James Joseph, number ten, and Slack will throw on first down. Into the flat. One hopper intended for Freddie Wigan. The secondary for Tennessee. Preston Warner, who has two interceptions in the young season. Mark Fletcher starts on the right side. And the safeties are Chris Treese, number 38, and Tony Nelson, a fifth-year senior, 
who gets his first start today as Johnny Majors tries to find the puck. Now this Tennessee defense is going to do the job today. They're just going to have to do a much better job of tackling. The inside linebackers are key. Auburn goes with three wide receivers. Wagand in the slot to the left. The backs are in the eye as Slack looks over the Tennessee defense. Toss right side, James Joseph. Met and driven down at the 36. Tackle made by Keith DeLong, number 33. One of only three seniors starting on the team. And this is what we talked about at the top of the show. When you think of old Tennessee defense, you got a lot of jerseys around the ball. They haven't done that this year. But here in the first series, we see four or five Tennessee jerseys around the ball. That's what it's going to take to win today. Very young Tennessee defense. As we said, three seniors, and the third senior is Tony Nelson, who is getting his first start. They have started only two in the first two games. A four-wide receiver set now for Auburn on third and nine. Four-man rush for the Volunteers. Deep pass caught. Wagan first down at the 32. Freddie Wagan, the fifth-year senior with the Germans. When you put four wide receivers in the game and you can give your quarterback protection and time to throw, you really have a chance for a big play. Freddie Wagan, number 14, is going to line up in the slot. But watch the protection here. That's the key to any passing attack. It's a short drop so that you don't have to worry about the slot man. Wagan right here is going to run right down the center of the defense and beat what is really a linebacker. Nice touch by Reggie Slack. That's a 32-yard gain on third and nine. First down, Auburn. Play fake, and Slack looks left. Goes over the middle deep. Incomplete, intended for Alexander Wright. The junior from Albany, Georgia, and Tony Nelson was defending number six. One of the nice things we've seen here by the Auburn passing attack in the first drive, they throw one pass to the outside, one pass over the middle, and that time they try to hit right on a little inside cut at about a 20 yards. So they're throwing the ball inside and outside. Second down and 10. Auburn, as you look at other Second scores from around the country on college football on a Saturday in September. Second down, 10. No score. Opening moments of the ball game. 15-34 to go. Draw play. James Joseph. Well, last week he had two runs for 83 yards. Today he's got two for no yards. Tackle made by Keith DeLong again, Pat. And that's DeLong's second stop, and that's what it's going to take. DeLong on defense for Tennessee is going to have to have a very big day. He reads the offensive guard, sees it as a draw, steps in the hole, makes the play. As we said, Keith, one of three seniors starting today. Dime defense comes in defensively now on third and 12. Four wide receivers set again. Wagan in the slot left. Slack with a five-step drop. Very little pressure, but good defensive coverage allows the sack to be made by Charles McRae. That is only the second sack, Pat, in four games for Tennessee. And Tennessee needs this kind of pressure on the quarterback. He lines up at left tackle number 70. He does a nice job against Thompson there, then goes around him and makes the play. That's Selby, number 78, he made the play around. But McRae grabbed him, threw him away, and got to the quarterback. Brian Schulman, who once played for Tennessee, is the putter and it goes into the end zone it comes back to the 20. one big play that of 32 yards but the volunteer defense held when it got it inside the 35 no score at auburn pat o'brien outside the stadium now and this is a scene that goes on all across america on football saturday the tailgating but here in the south they do it a little differently silver look at this layout they have these are all Auburn fans, their host Stuart Johnson is from Tennessee. How come you're so nice to these people? An Auburn Tennessee game is a southern tradition. We've been doing this for 25 years. And having a good time at it, too, right? Having a great time. Thank you, Stuart. Go Vols! Some of these people park their RVs here in the first game of the season and they leave them till the very last. That's tradition. Back to you guys. <laughs> You know he was on a meal break. It's 10 to 1. They had fried catfish out there, too. <laughs> first down, Tennessee. First offensive set. Jeff Francis fakes the draw. Rolls out to his right. Puts it up in the flat. Caught. And that's a first down at the 32-yard line. Let's meet the Tennessee offense. That was John Rollins, the fullback, with the catch. Francis is the quarterback. The senior. Rollins is a senior at fullback. Joined by sophomore Reggie Cobb. The receivers are Thomas Woods and Terrence Cleveland. Neither one breaks 5-10. Nate Middlebrooks is the tight end. And we'll get the rest of the offensive line after this first down play for Tennessee. Backs in the eye. This time they run the draw. And 
Reggie Cobb is nailed. Tackle made by Quentin Riggins, the leading tackler, number 41. Now let's meet the... Number 41 right there in the middle of your screen. Again, he reads the job, sifts through the traffic. That's what an inside linebacker has to do. Sift through that tack of the traffic, and then he makes a real nice play. Riggins, the leading tackler with 19 in two games. He's only 5'11", 210. Second down and nine. Back from the eye again. Double tight end set for the Volunteers. That's Cobb in motion wide to the right. Francis looks right. Flag is down. At the 39-yard line, if the play stands, it is good for a first down. Reggie Cobb with the catch. And the tackle made by Steve Brown, number 38. Now let's check the infraction. The referee today is Rom Gilbert. South Carolina rolling over Georgia. That surprises me. Todd Ellis had a big game so far. That's an important SEC game you just saw. Offside! Defense! Lined up in a neutral zone! Penalty to cry! Kentucky winning over Kent State. And Syracuse with an early lead over Virginia Tech. Two first downs back to back. This is the first time since the first game against Georgia that Tennessee has not started offensively at its own one yard line. Pass back, Francis. Not much pressure. Man is open. Caught at the 40 yard line. The catch made by Thomas Woods. That's his 15th of the year. And the offensive line is doing a good job early on. Ray Robinson at center. The guard, Patrick Lenore, gets his first start two weeks ago. He was a defensive lineman. Eric Still of the other guard. The tackles are Kevin Simons and Phil Stewart. And Tennessee is moving first and 10 at the Auburn 41. Middlebrooks, the tight end, is tight to the right side. And off to John Rollins, the fullback, the senior from Knoxville. And Smokey Hodge makes the tackle. Let's take a look at this Auburn defensive line. It's a good one. Benji Rowland, that's no tackle. Tracy Rocker, the All-American, and Ron Stallworth, the other tackle. The inside backers, Quentin Riggins and Steve Brown. On the outside, Alvin Mitchell and Brian Smith. And the defensive secondary for Auburn. We'll get to in just a moment. Second down and seven. Francis settles short. Reggie Cobb, second catch. And that's a first down at the 30-yard line. Quentin Riggins makes the tackle. The Auburn secondary. And they've got a man back today who's been out most of the year. Carlo Cheatham gets his first start. He is a dandy. John Wiley at right corner. And the safeties are Greg Staples and Shan Morris. You know, I talked to Jeff Francis. He said that he has to be physical. The whole team does, but even the quarterback, that means the way he carries himself, scrambling for a first down, dumping the ball off when he has to. And Jeff Francis didn't like the alignment, either defensively or offensively, so he calls timeout. Auburn has not been scored upon in the first half so far this year. We'll see what happens in a moment. With 10-25 to go first quarter, but Tennessee's Jeff Francis has hit four of four to open the ball game. And the Volunteers have a first and 10 just inside the Auburn 30. And the Tigers have not been scored upon in the first half this season. They've given up only a total of 17 points. High formation and the draw play. Reggie Cobb, big hole and another huge game. Down to the 19, that's another Tennessee first down with Shan Morris making the tackle. What happens here, the Tennessee front really controls the nose band, and that gives the tailback a lot of different options to run the ball when he's in the eye formation. If he can control the nose, and that time Benji Rowland really ran around the play, that opens up a huge hole for Reggie Cobb. Cobb, of course, with a huge year a year ago as a freshman when he erupted in the kickoff classic for less than more than 100 yards. There's the measurement and another Tennessee first down. Reggie Cobb had 182 yards in the second game against Duke, but was held to 52 last week. They look impressive. Very impressive. And they're mixing it up. They're spreading the defense. They're dumping the ball to the back line in motion. They're throwing the ball downfield. And then they pitch it to Reggie Cobb. Fifth first down in the drive that began at the 20. Draw play again. This time they stop it, but a flag is down on the far side of the field. 
That was Cobb. And we'll see against whom the infraction is called. Majors must be pleased early on. That's twice the defense from Auburn has lined up in the neutral zone. But if you're a Tennessee fan, this is what you want to see. Early in the ball game, this is what Tennessee needs to have some com confidence. You can't be thinking about a lot of touchdowns. But just get that next first down. Keep the chains moving. First down and five. Both wide receivers wide to the wide side of the field. Francis looks that direction. Settles in the flat. Nice catch by Reggie Cobb. Jeff Francis, of course, is a fifth-year senior. We asked him what it would take for Tennessee to win today. I think the biggest thing to, you know, always beating Auburn, as we know, is I think, first of all, not to turn the ball over. And the second thing is to be physical with them. You know, the only success we've had in the last few years uh, with Auburn is when we've been physical with them. And uh, we know they're a physical team, and, you know, just try to, try to match their, their intimidating style. Off camera, Jeff said, they'll hit you in the mouth. we got to hit them in the mouth. Here's the dive play. Up the middle, trying for the first down. Johnny Majors looks on. I'm going to ask Pat, what does he mean by a quarterback being physical? How well, can that happen? I thought that was interesting because he said, hey, I as a quarterback, I have to be physical here today. And that means, again, the way I carry myself, present myself in the huddle on third downs. If nothing's there, i got to scramble, pick up a first down, lead this team, get him in the right audibles. That's how I have to be physical. They will bring the chain out to see if they got the first down. And it's going to be short. So officially third and one. Third and one. Pat Dye told us yesterday he has a farm some distance outside of Auburn. He always spends Friday morning at the farm. He said yesterday he was so nervous about this game he couldn't enjoy the day and he never got out of the barn. Well, he was concerned about the history of this game, even though Auburn's been favored over the years. Tennessee seems to have their number, and that 0-3 team he thought is a very dangerous team to play. Third and one. No score. 8.35 to go first quarter in Auburn, Alabama. That's close. John Rollins, the senior fullback, who doesn't get that many carries, the converted tight end. And they like to give the ball to the fullback once every lunar eclipse. <laughs> but Rollins got enough. There's an injured player for Tennessee down at the 10-yard line. That's Ray Robinson, who has been injured quite a bit in his career. They wanted to get 20 plays out of Ray Robinson at center today. And they expect that John Fisher will play quite a bit in that spot. Time is out on the field. We'll be back. Ray Robinson, the senior Tennessee center, already the victim of two knee surgeries, major knee surgeries, and that is an apparent knee surgery to his right knee. He was assisted from the field. We'll get an update from Pat O'Brien shortly. Pat, they wanted him only for 20 plays, and that has relevance to the, uh, to the knee injury. Well, because of those two major knee surgeries, that's all they want, because he's going to come out and play his heart out for those 20 plays. Freshman redshirt John Fisher, number 51, takes his spot. First and goal, Tennessee. Toss left, Reggie Cobb has to cut back inside because the pursuit was terrific. And John Ron Stallworth made the tackle. Here's where it gets tough for an offensive team that likes to throw the football. When you have to match the ball down inside the 15-yard line to score. If your offensive linemen are used to pass blocking, it's tough to get off the line of scrimmage to make the play to match the ball into the end zone. Second down and goal. Middlebrooks, the tight end, lines up tight to the right. Francis draw play, Reggie Cobb, no. Riggins on top, but down low, Tracy Rucker, who played only seven defensive plays against Kansas last week, the All-American. Tracy Rocker plays his position of defensive tackle as well as Tommy Hodson plays his position of quarterback at LSU or Bobby Humphrey plays his position of running back at Alabama. He is one of the best in college football. Tremendous strength and gets off the ball very quickly. Three wide receivers set now. Riggs and Cleveland go to the right. Anthony Harper comes into the left side. And Francis might be changing the play. 
Quarterback draw didn't work. Ron Stallworth and Benji Rowland read it. It'll be fourth down. Here's where the front three from Auburn really give you some problems. Number 96, Benji Rowland, right in the middle of your screen. Watch how quick he's off and gets off the ball. Does a, does a little swim technique. The center has no chance, and he's quick enough, even at 270 pounds, to jump around and tackle the quarterback on the draw. There is also another player down. Bill Stewart for Tennessee. And this is Steve Brown, who had a serious thigh bruise last week. That's Bill Stewart, the offensive tackle for Tennessee. Boy, that's something that the coaches hate to see, certainly, for, of course, for Stewart. But in the offensive line, they are so thin. We're going to get a look at the top left of your screen. Number 63 is Phil Stewart. He's on rocker number 74, plants the leg, and then the body falls in. That's how most injuries, I think, occur right there. One of his own, uh, uh, it's Francis who actually fell into him, the quarterback. Stewart still down at the eight. Steve Brown, in the meantime, has gotten up. Phil Stewart, senior tackle from Johnson City, Tennessee. And if he's unable to continue, he would be the second offensive lineman lost to the Volunteers in this drive. He's not one of those guys with, that's terribly gifted but plays hard every down. It'll be fourth down now for Tennessee, and Chip McCallum comes on as that depleted offensive line is further injured as Stewart goes out. McCallum, for the season, is two of six. He missed three in one game. That against Duke. This will be 24 yards. It's good. And the Tennessee Volunteers, zero and three, make the first mark this afternoon. A finely executed drive as McCallum's field goal gives them a 3 nothing lead and the first point scored against Auburn in the first half this season. It was a nice drive. Well sequenced of plays. They threw the ball outside, inside, and they had a little power football. College football for you today and a big, big day of NFL football coming up tomorrow. It's a doubleheader on CBS, and in the first game, after we begin with the NFL today, most of you will see Green Bay against Chicago. That'll be seen in the major part of the country, and Mike Ditka looks on. Atlanta will be at Dallas tomorrow. Some of you will see that game. And also Philadelphia against Minnesota. Tampa Bay visits New Orleans. That's the early venue. And then the second game, most of you will watch the undefeated Los Angeles Rams go into New Jersey to take on the New York Giants. Also, the 49ers visit Seattle. And the Washington Redskins with Mark Rippon as the starting quarterback will be at Phoenix. It all begins with the NFL today. I'm looking forward to watching that Ram-Giant game. The Rams are off to a great start. Jimmy Everett's playing well. Kevin Green, who played here at Auburn, has seven sacks for the Rams this year. That defense has really made a difference for the Rams. Giants got a big win last week when they... Uh, were the recipients of a safety, a, a phantom safety at Texas Stadium, and they won 12-10. MIT leads Stonehill, 9-7. First time MIT has played football in 87 years. Alexander Wright for Auburn. <laughs> Terrific special teams play by the Volunteers. And Floyd Miley, number 22, leads the way. That's a 13-yard return. Alexander Wright looked like a track man trying to play football. He is a track man with tremendous speed, and he's trying to develop his football skills. But this is tremendous coverage by the Volunteers. And again, this is what it's going to have to have to happen. Defensive swarming, special teams are going to have to do it, and the offense has to be physical. Cincinnati and Miami of Ohio in the 100 meeting. By the way, Brent Musburger's son is a student at Miami, and Brent is taking the day off and is visiting that game. He'll be at the NFL Today Studios tomorrow. There's the cross around the left side. Vincent Harris, the fullback, and he's out to the 24. Tackle is made by Cedric Klein, number 30. Right now, let's go down to Pat O'Brien. Down on the Tennessee sideline where the doctors are having a busy afternoon early. Robinson here, it's his right knee, Vern and Pat. And Ray Robinson has it iced up now. He does not know if he'll be back in. Right down, right behind him here, Stewart, number 63. His right knee also is injured. He seems to be injured the worst of the two. We'll keep you posted. Back up to All right, Pat. Second down and short. They test the middle. Vincent Harris, the junior from Birmingham. And that should be enough to move the chains. 
Reggie Slack out of Milton, Florida. High school team didn't pass much. He told Pat and me he averaged about six passes a game, so he was not recruited as a thrower. He was recruited basically as an athlete. Wasn't sure whether he was going to play defensive back, wide receiver, quarterback. But Pat Sullivan, the quarterback coach, when he saw him throw his first pass when he got here on campus, he knew he had a diamond in the rough. He just had to develop his fundamentals. And now I think he is very fundamentally sound. Black and Jr. toss to the left side. James Joseph cracks through left tackle after the 30-yard line. That's a pickup of four. Marion Hobby makes the tackle. This is a high-powered Auburn offense, currently ranked fifth in the country with a 530-yard-per-game average. And what I like about it is balanced. About half of that comes from the pass and the other half with the run. They could have named their total last week against Kansas. They had 680 yards in that game. It usually means a win. <laughs> Second down and six. 3-0 Tennessee, 440 to go first quarter. They'll test the left side again with Joseph. Flag is down. That's the third flag in the first quarter. We have seen Auburn try to run so far into the short side of the field, and they're doing that because Tennessee really overloads the wide side of the field. In college football, because the hashes are close to the boundaries, most college teams defend the field, and so Auburn's trying to run away from the strength and into the boundary. Here's the call from Ron Gilbert. Holding! Offense! Look at the Auburn uh, linemen. They're all in the up stance on this running play. Ordinarily, that's a passing stance, but this time they ran out of that formation, which is a little unusual. Second down and 16. The Tigers go with three wide receivers. Black, play fake. A modest one. Across the middle, caught. That's Walter Reed, the tight end, and the tackle from Keith DeLong, who's been active on defense. Right now, let's go back to our New York studio. Here's Jim Nance. Well, Vern, there's somebody special playing for Rutgers today. It's Mike Body, his second touchdown of the third quarter, this time galloping 57 yards, putting Rutgers up 11 late in the third over Penn State. And Emmett Smith has returned to the Florida lineup to start the second half. Back to Vernon Pat. Jimmy, we've got a four-wide receiver offense in on third and 11. Slack back, four-man rush, three-man rush, really. Deep pass caught, Alexander Wright. He's got four-two speed. They'll never catch it. chased and had to put it in the second when he got down near the 10. Win Lyle with the extra point is up. It's good. And just like that, take a look at a 75-yard toss. Alexander Wright is really not a natural receiver. He is a track man, but he's getting more and more comfortable. What I liked about him, he really squared this route off and he caught the ball with his hands. And any time you get the ball to a receiver who is that fast on the move, you have a chance for touchdowns. Kelly Day is chasing. We look at it from another angle. And terrific pass protection really set up the play. Watch Reggie Slack. No wasted motion. The ball's up high. He leads the receiver right, catches it with the hands, picks up a nice block, and that's a great play. Getting the ball to the receiver on the move. Alexander Wright is a young man who is playing in place of Lawyer Tillman today. Tillman out with a hamstring. Top of the screen, you're going to see Wright come down and watch how square he is on the coming across the middle of the field, and he is beautifully led by Slack. A lot of receivers, when they run this route, drift off into center field and get the ball intercepted, but he comes right down the line and does a great job with his hands catching the ball. That's 75 yards on the pass and run, and Auburn is back on top 7-3 with 3.34 to go. First quarter. That awakened this crowd. 
Alexander Wright from Albany, Georgia. Six foot, 185 pounds. And that is his second touchdown of the season. Anthony Morgan is the deep man from Tennessee. He can run. Up to the 41-yard line after the short kickoff. A 28-yard return for Morgan. A challenge here for this Tennessee offense, a team that is 0-3, they've been off to a good start, is again, just start thinking about first downs. Keep moving those chains. Don't worry about this pool right now. Get some confidence up, move the chains, and pick up first downs. If you just joined us, the Volunteers on their first offensive series lost two starters, Robinson and Stewart. Play fake, Francis, good protection. Nice pass, Thomas Wood. First down at the 40. That's Wood's second catch today, his 16th of the year. Well, Jeff Francis has done a nice job of uh, taking a little step here and there back in the pocket. Good protection here, but he feels a little bit of pressure, and then he just steps up. The rocker doesn't have a chance. Even when he steps up there, he gets away from the rush, away from Tracy Rocker, and that's one of those subtle things a quarterback can do to help his football team and help his offensive line. Thomas Woods with a catch, a gain of 19, first down at the 41. Francis, 6-6, six six. fumble. Got it back, no gain. No gain on the play. Tennessee has lost only three fumbles in the three games in one quarter they played. But they've made critical fumble mistakes. Just lost the handle here on the snap from center. It looked like it was going to be a play-action fake. And sometimes you're so concerned about the play-action fake, you don't stay underneath the center long enough to get the ball. Woods and Cleveland both come to the near side. The tiny wide receivers, 5'8 and 5'9 respectively. Francis back, looks across the middle, man wide open. Terrence Cleveland with a catch. First down at the 35, the tackle by Alvin Mitchell, number 48, a gain of 15. Pat, they use a lot of the three wide receiver offense. And they use the three wide receiver set for a couple of reasons. As you can see, the three guys right here, they're all wide receivers, one, two, and three. First of all, they spread the defense. And see how many defenders it takes to defend them? One, two, three, four, and five. And that makes for a soft front. They could run the ball inside or throw the ball outside. The cross, right side. This is Keith Davis, the senior, number 28. And he's down to the 20-yard line. The tackle made by Carlo Cheatham, number 35. Davis on in place of Reggie Cobb. Keith Davis is a freshman rush for in excess of 600 yards and thought he had a potential All-American career at Tennessee. But the first play of his sophomore season, serious knee injury. And then when he came back, this kid Cobb took his place, and he's been a backup since. But a good one. Jeff Francis now 7 of 7 for 83 yards. Second and three. They try the fullback. No. Francis on the keeper. What a great fake. And that's being physical. That's what Jeff Francis was talking about. As he has to scramble every now and then to pick up three or four yards. He doesn't need a long touchdown run. He needs to be physical on these kind of runs. Now, Auburn wants him to catch the ball or run the ball. He fakes the pitch and does a nice job of cutting it up in there. Doesn't look quite confident running that ball up in the middle of that defense, though, does he? Wonderful job by John Rollins carrying out the Francis fake. And it's first and ten just outside the ten. See the perfect day Francis is at throwing the ball so far. Davis in motion out of the backfield. Four-man rush by Auburn. Francis caught and rocked. Craig Ogletree, number 94, who's getting his first action of the year. The coaches told me that if Ogletree can stay healthy this year, he is really going to make a big difference. Watch him, watch him from the right side of the screen. He's going to come in and make a big play on the quarterback. The outside linebacker who's uncovered runs right over Rollins. It's kind of a mismatch in size, and when you have a quarterback taking a short drop, that can happen. Final 20 seconds, first quarter. 7-3, Auburn, second down and 15. This time they try the dive play for John Rollins. That doesn't get much. And that should be the final play of the quarter. Boy, a very surprising call on second and long. You don't give the fullback plunge uh, up the middle. 
That's the end of the first quarter with our score, Auburn 7, Tennessee 3. College football on CBS Sports returns after this message and a word from your local station. In case you just joined us, bring you up to date. Jeff Francis, the volunteer quarterback, a perfect 7-7 seven seven for 84 yards. The Auburn touchdown came on a 75-yard Reggie Sack to Alexander Wright pass. And the total yards, quite even. Auburn 121, Tennessee 116. Right now, third and 12 from the 13. Two wide receivers, wide left. Cobb and Davis both in the backfield. Reggie Cobb is still there. Francis, screen pass left. Cobb has it, but he doesn't have any help. And he is down at the eight-yard line. Bobbled the ball. And the convoy disappeared. And a surprising call. I don't think a screen pass is a very good call inside the 20 because the defensive backs and linebackers don't drop back very far. It's hard to pick up 12 yards on a screen inside the 20. That will bring on Chip McCallum as Francis tries to explain to Johnny Majors what went wrong with that play. And McCallum tries for his second of the ball game. First good from 24. It's up. It's no good. He's now three of seven for the year. That has not been a Tennessee strong point. And that'll puncture the euphoria on the volunteer bench for a while. But just when they need a little lift, that happens. The snap from Nick Zucchino was good. The hold from Lee England was good. The kick wasn't. So much of kicking, it's like quarterbacking, so much of it, I think, is just confidence. And when you've missed a couple like McCallum has, I think you need to hit a few in a row before you really feel that confidence. After the unsuccessful kick, Auburn gets it back for the third time in the ballgame. On their opening series, they had one big play of 32 yards. But Tennessee held. Then on the second series, 75-yard toss. Reggie slacked to Alexander Wright. That's Vincent Harris, number 21, the fullback. Joseph lines up in a wing to the right on first down. Motion on the left side of the offensive line, and that'll cost Auburn five yards. That's unexpected. All of these motion penalties and lining up in the neutral zone for the Tigers. And usually Pat Dye's teams are incredibly disciplined. Very sound coach Pat Dye is. and defensive lines. It's kind of amazing when you go to Auburn and you want to talk to the coaches, Pat Dye sends you right into the offensive line coach and the defensive line coach. You'll get a chance to talk to the quarterback coach. He wants you talking to the guys coaching the horses. The quarterback coach at Auburn, the Heisman Trophy winner, Pat Sullivan. Three wide receivers set. And they did it again. This is Ed King, who is a true freshman and quite a prospect from Phoenix City, Alabama, one of the most highly recruited linemen in the country last year. That'll cost him five right now. Let's get a check on Emmett Smith. Here's Jim Nance. Well, Vern, is Emmett Smith healthy? He has just answered that question. Look at him break the tackle. An electrifying 96-yard touchdown run for Emmett Smith. Remember, he pulled the muscle in the second quarter, making up for lost time here. He's over the 100-yard mark for the seventh straight game. Back to Vernon Tech. All right, Jim, that's good news for all college football fans to see him back in. In the meantime, Auburn, Vincent Harris up the middle for just a smidge. It looks like thus far in the game, this Auburn team, but particularly his offense, really doesn't seem to be into the ball game. They don't seem to be sharp. They don't seem to be mentally in the ball game. We've seen three or four errors by the offense, and they find themselves in a second and long because of that. You look from behind, James Joseph. Second and 17. Slack back. Settles short. Nice catch. But good coverage defensively. Greg Taylor. Greg Taylor, the sophomore from Opelika, Alabama, makes the pass catch. Keith DeLong with the tackle. Another one. There's a reasonably good chance, Vern, with this kind of pass protection, I might have a chance to still play. Watch the protection that Slack gets. He get all day, again, the crossing route to Taylor. He had lined up on the right, went in motion, and caught the ball on the move. That's a nice throw and a nice idea when you have second and long. Two plays to get the first down. It still, however, leads Auburn with third and 12, and they go with four wide receivers. Now Shane Washington is the fourth. Slack quarterback draw. 
Nice run, but he couldn't get by the secondary. Keith DeLong again. And DeLong with a ton of tackles already here in the first quarter, first half. You know, this game of football is so important to Keith DeLong. He's a senior. The last time he's going to get a chance to play Auburn, this game means a lot to him. Brent Schulman, Brian Schulman from Brentwood, Tennessee, is on the punt. Gets it away. Thomas Woods to return. At the 32. And Amad is four yard counter punch. The tackle was made by Wayne Bleisman. 33 yard punt. Three on the return. Pat O'Brien here on the sidelines. And see these nice bushes here they have around the stadium? I'll get to them in a minute. Two years ago, Georgia came here to Auburn and upset them. And the Georgia fans came running onto the field and started tearing up the turf. So they put these nice bushes in. They have needles on them. They're about an inch and a half long to prevent fans from running out on the field. And I think it will work. <laughs> Let's go back to you guys. Oh, boy. Well, I've seen something a little less subtle in soccer <laughs> stadiums in Europe, but that, whatever. That'll get your attention. Won't it? won't it though i think georgia wishes it was back between the hedges today they were to use a southern term getting whomped on by south carolina in columbia first down and ten tennessee hanging in there seven to three auburn leads they fake the draw francis a great block now he lobs it out he was behind the line that's a legal catch to nate middlebrooks the tight end that's only his third catch of the year. They don't throw it to the tight end a lot. And you know who threw the great block that you were talking about was Reggie Cobb. But watch the center, number 51, Fisher, block the nose tackle. Roland, as he gets through, gets through very quickly. And that was Cobb who blocked the nose tackle. Reggie Cobb is an unselfish player, a complete player. He'll block for you, catch the ball, and certainly run the ball. Second down, three. Tennessee has moved it. Reggie Cobb. Bounces, tries to bounce. Oh, he was a fraction away from a big game. Let's watch Benji Rowland in action. Benji Rowland's one of the few guys I know who likes playing nose tackle, believe it or not. Number 90, he's getting hit by all sorts of people going in different directions. He just gets his back right up in there and gets the back and stuffs everything, and Reggie Cobb tries to bounce it outside. Third and three. Seven to three, Auburn leads it. 11.40 to go in a half. Reggie Cobb now five carries for 12 yards. He's caught a couple. Third and three. Option play. Nice play to the fullback. That's Vando Davis, the third fullback utilized by Johnny Majors. He is a junior, number 29, out of Wilmington, Delaware. And that's a surprise to me on a third and three with the strength of this Auburn defense that are down three that they can pick up those three yards using the fullback. They will bring the chain out. Florida rolling over Mississippi State, having previously squeaked by Montana State and Indiana State. There's Johnny Majors. Spoke about the indomitability of college players and how they always are able to refresh themselves from week to week and thus revive the attitude of the coaches to get them back. It'll be fourth down. And the balls will not go for it, apparently. They will punt. Kent Elmore on the punt for the first time. 43.6 yard average for the year. Pretty Wagan wait for it at the 15. The Auburn senior. That is returnable. Pretty good downfield coverage by Tennessee. And they stop Wagan short of the 20 yard line. A 37 yard punt, a modest run for Elmore. But only one on the return. Tigers have the ball. 11 minutes to go on the half. Senior Keith DeLong has led this Tennessee defense with five tackles already today. We asked him what Tennessee had to do to win. Well, uh, our defense is very suspect going into the season, so I think it's time right now. We need to pull together as a team. Um, Inexperiences can no longer be used. Uh, we just need to play. We need to start playing football and have some team unity. I would think a 7-3 score midway to early in the second quarter might help. 33, Keith DeLong, whose father Steve was the Outland Trophy winner in 1964 at Tennessee and is in attendance today. Back to play, 11 one to go first half. Reggie Slack back from the eye toss. James Joseph 
He's got some room. Gets a terrific downfield block. And now it's a foot race. Out of bounds at the 21. Preston Warren saved the touchdown. A gain of 60 yards. James Joseph knows how to adjust on the run. This ball was supposed to go all the way outside. He picked up a great block by Brad Johnson, number 52, and then a downfield block by one of his receivers, Taylor. Freddie Wagan also a part of it, number 14. Well, watch number 52, the left guard there. That's Brad Johnson. He kicked out the strong safety. Joseph does the adjustment on the run. Wagan and Taylor, number 16, make the block. That's a gain of 60 for the man they call Bo Peep. <laughs> James Joseph out of Phoenix City, up the middle, inside the 15. Joseph again, he came in, that's Harris. Joseph came in with a gaudy 10.3 yards per carry average. Achieved in large measure because of the extraordinary number of long runs he's had already this year. And he came into Auburn a couple years ago. In his first two weeks, he put on 20 pounds. He knew he had too much weight when all the offensive linemen were challenging him in the 40-yard dash. Second down and one. Walter Reeves lines up tight to the left side. To the fullback, Vincent Harris. That's the first down for Auburn. Well, they have come in explosive dimension today. A 75-yard touchdown pass in the first quarter. And now a 60-yard run to set up this thrust by the Auburn Tigers. Auburn wants to be a physical team that can come up with big plays. That's a little unusual. Ordinarily, if you're a physical team, you run the ball off tackle a lot. But these guys had the capability of coming up with big plays in the passing game. Lee Mark Sellers comes in as an extra tight end. He is tight to the left. First and goal. Freddie Wakeand is wide right. They fake the toss. Reggie Slack. Still alive. Casey Rogers, number 99, finally caught up with him. It's a nice little call, I think, by Auburn. They were trying to fool a freshman. Casey Rogers is a freshman playing outside linebacker. The naked bootleg. Reggie Slack thought he was going to be able to fool Casey Rogers, the freshman. He stayed at home. Second down and goal from the six. 7 3 Auburn. 9 05 to go first half. James Joseph knocked down behind the line. He lost a half yard. Keith DeLong with his sixth tackle today. And five white jerseys around the ball carrier. This is the most important third down for the Tennessee defense right now. They have to prevent them from getting a touchdown. Auburn apparently going to pass. They brought in two extra wide receivers, Greg Taylor and White, come in. Reeves and Lee Mark Sellers, the two tight ends, come out. So it's a three-receiver set. Wagan and Taylor go to the right. Alexander Wright comes to the wide side of the field, the left. And the up stance by the Auburn offensive line. Blitz threatened. They're coming. Draw play. James Joseph knocked down. Really not a bad call against a blitzing defense. Because ordinarily, a blitzing defense will run right past the draw play. But that time, it didn't really happen. It was a little slow developing, I think. Joseph takes the ball a little bit too deep in the, in the, uh, back in the backfield. And number six, Tony Nelson put the final stop on him. Wynn Lyle, who's a four-point student in three minutes, is on to try his first field goal of the year. He sat out the first game of the season. And the kick is good from 22 yards for Wim Lyle, the junior from Auburn, Alabama. So Tennessee did what they had to do after the 60-yard run. They held Auburn to three. Johnson kicks it off. Anthony Morgan near the goal line for Tennessee. Has some room for the 31. And that will be a 31-yard return. Thus far, Jeff Francis perfect. Nine out of nine for 95 yards. And Pat, where has he distributed those passes? Well, he's really throwing the ball downfield, as you can see, in his left deep zone. That's over 10 yards. He's really done a nice job of spreading the ball around, and that's what makes it difficult for a defensive team to cover a quarterback. They're not necessarily trying to pick on one guy or one side of the field. 
They're doing a nice job of spreading it around. Francis, a perfect nine of nine. Two wide receivers to the wide side. 10-3, Auburn. They fake the draw. Francis being chased. Flips it in, completed the 35-yard line. The man doing the chasing was David Walker, Tracy's younger brother. Well, he sure was doing the tracing. And that is France's first incomplete pass of the afternoon. That's like saying no hitter. We should never have said that. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the truth? <laughs> Tell you, among those uh, with whom Jeff Francis has tossed the football is Terry Bradshaw, who had made a speech in Knoxville back during Francis's red shirt season and worked out with him and is among his fans. Thinks he's a very good college quarterback. Second down and ten. Toss right. That's after the 36 to the lead third and five. The tackle made by Quentin Riggins. Hit by Riggins. The tiny senior, and I say tiny in the context of this large defense of Auburn. He's 5'11", 205. You know, he's got a heart the size of New Hampshire. I mean, he really is kind of a dodger. I mean, he gets back there. He's only 5'11", 210 pounds. But he just sifts through all that traffic and finds the ball carrier. One thing Tennessee has not accomplished with ease today, third down conversion. They are one of five, and they have a third and five right now. They trail by seven, under seven minutes to go in the half. Four-man rush. Francis, it'll be fourth down. He's a yard shy, and it's Ron Stallworth, number 92, who makes the stop. was a very big series for the Auburn defense. Three plays and punt. That's the first time they've accomplished that today. Wagand is back. Ken Elmore is on the punt for the second time. Fairly good punt. Wagand at the 20. Circles back to the 15 and has some room. And is tackled at the 29 yard line. present this week's Toyota Leadership Award. The team players have been singled out by their school's coaching and faculty staff for outstanding performance in the areas of team competitions, academics, and citizenship. Today's game team leadership winners are Keith DeLong from Tennessee, a sports management major from Lawrence, Kansas, and Greg Staples from Auburn. Greg is a criminal justice major from Atmore, Alabama. First and ten as War Eagle looks on. Alex Strong and Stacy Danley in the backfield now for the Auburn Tigers. And Slack with a play fake, drops back to throw. Across the middle deep, Alexander Wright right in the scene. A gain of 50, or rather to the 50. It's a gain of 21. Pass completions are the result of two things, really. Good pass protection, which Slack has received all afternoon, and they Offensive receiver beating the defense. Wright ran an little inside route again against zone defense. He was wide open. Beautifully executed play. 5.45 to go first half. First down 10 at midfield. Lee Mark Sellers, the tight end in motion. And the handoff. Stacy Danley. Up the middle to the 44. Right now, let's go back and check in with Jim Nance. Laverne, quarterback Tom Bill of Penn State with a knee injury in the fourth quarter. Freshman Tony Saka takes over, drives the Nittany Lions to a score. Gary Brown takes it across. Nittany Lions missed a two-point conversion. Down five with nine minutes to go. Back to Vernon Tech. So you're playing at Penn State. That's a lot of time left. How many times have you seen Penn State come back and win in the fourth quarter at home? Starting to the outside, Alex Strong. That's a first down for Auburn. He's at a 37. Shazan Bradley is a true freshman and the only true freshman starting defensively for Tennessee. Really a remarkable story. A young man who was thought to be mentally retarded, didn't read to learn to read until he was in the fifth grade, but has made wonderful strides and qualified to play at Tennessee. I really admire guys who've overcome a lot of adversity. He got up at 6 o'clock in the morning for months to study to pass the exam to enter Tennessee. Down to the 45. You know, guys like Bradley fight incredible odds. He was shuffled around different school districts and, as you said, didn't learn how to read till he was 
in the fifth grade. But what I admire, he didn't let anybody say no to him. He was no, going to be committed. He wanted to go to the University of Tennessee. And, and easy pass an AC test for some guys. But he was hard for him. He worked hard past. And now he's in and doing well. Second down and seven. Four ten to go in the first half. The cross right, Stacey Danley. Pretty good defensive job by Tennessee to drive him back. Number 88, Tracy Hayworth. Excellent job of stringing the play on. And this has been a big surprise so far to me today, Vern, is the intensity with this, the defense has played, the volunteer defense, that is. Again, four or five jerseys right there, led by number 40, Shazan Bradley, that we're just talking about, and Tracy Hayworth, number 88. But that's what it's going to take, four or five white jerseys. Defense is a kind of an attitude. Just to put a period to the paragraph of Shazan Bradley, he's got a sparkling personality. We asked him yesterday if he had the answers to all the questions. He said no, because as soon as you think you know the answer, they keep changing the questions. Here's the cross short. That's going to be very close at the 28. Brian Kimbrough, number 55, makes the tackle. Very close for the first down at the 28. The LSU undefeated and early leader over Ohio State. Iowa State leading, or rather Iowa leading Iowa State. Did he get it? Yes, he did. You always get him at home. <laughs> <laughs> Talked about defense really being a state of mind. Look who wins the SEC over the past few years. It's teams that have played rugged defense, and you have to stop the run in this conference because teams run the ball very, very well. First and 10, Auburn. They lead by seven. Under three minutes to go, first half. Blake Ann in motion. The toss, left side, Stacy Danley cuts it upfield. The inside, the 25, fumble. Tennessee ball, first turnover of the game. Number 90 comes up with it. As Mark Moore and Kelly Days hurry off, and Mark Moore forced the fumble, number 74. The defense did a very nice job. The first thing, watch how they stretch out Danley. He's looking for a soft spot early on, but all the jerseys spread him out. Then Danley tries to cut it back inside, and again, four or five white jerseys. Hobby, number 90, makes the ball, uh, pops the ball loose, and one of his teammates makes the recovery. That's good team defense. 2.39 to go before half. Francis up the middle. Reggie Cobb nudges out near the 23. Tracy Rocker, number 74, with the tackle. I would think if the score doesn't change, the volunteers feel good. Oh, absolutely. They have played. They've done all the things they want to do. They're going to go in at halftime, hopefully, with a close ball game. They've played aggressively on defense, and they haven't turned the ball over on offense. Thomas Woods comes on. Terrence Cleveland goes out. It's second down and seven. Francis, nine of ten for 95 yards. Play fake. Francis up. Left side. That one quacked. Late hit out of bounds. They're going to get John Wiley, number nine, as Thomas Woods made the catch. Dead ball foul, personal foul, Auburn. Yeah, you take a look at the end of the play. The ball is thrown away from the defender by Francis, which is a nice uh, play so the ball didn't get picked off. One foot was on the line. And Wiley hit him while he was out of bounds. There's the official. Now, if you think in Tennessee, they have two timeouts remaining with 152. The big concern if you're Jeff Francis is you know your kicker's got some problems. So you got to be thinking touchdown. McCallum has already missed one. He's made one, but that was from 24 yards out. And McCallum only three of seven this season. That puts an added burden on a quarterback when you can't, you don't really have the confidence in your kicker. First down, Tennessee, 152 to go in the half. That is the fifth penalty against Auburn for 40 yards. Toss, Reggie Cobb. Now 
Donovan Mitchell said no way. Number 48 defensively. We mentioned that uh, MIT was playing its first season of football in 87 years. George Carlin is on the Jim Nance at halftime to talk about that. I'm sure, seriously. What a combination. Troy Aikman and George Carlin. <laughs> Second down, 11. Francis runs right, has a man wide open. Caught! First down at the 36-yard line of Auburn. Terrence Cleveland at 5'8", 151 pounds. And believe it or not, the coaching staff says he is the toughest man on the squad. In the out route, which he runs from the slot formation, he is in the slot right here in the middle of the screen. Watch him that he's going to come down, run the out route, which is a good call when you're trying to stop the clock. And it's a deep out, and it takes a strong arm to be able to do that. He was guarded by the linebacker, Riggins, number 41. Cleveland second catch, first and 10, 58 seconds to go. Francis had to hurry He's dumped after he lets it go, and the crowd wants an intentional grounding penalty. You know what I like about Jeff Francis is that when he feels the rush, he is still looking downfield. A lot of quarterbacks, when they see the rush, they're looking at the defensive lineman, and they never see when a receiver breaks open. But Francis is always looking downfield, even when he's scrambling. No flag, though Pat Dye obviously wanted one. What do you think? Well, I think he gave it a little uh, Lawrence Olivier. <laughs> no, that, that wasn't a rough, uh, roughing the passer at all. Good call. How about an intentional ground? No. That could well have been an intentional ground. Keith Davis and Roland Poles join the backfield for Tennessee. 40 seconds to go in the half, second and 10. 10 3, Auburn leads it. Blitz coming, Quentin Riggins. Perfect call. And a terrific block downfield inside the 25. Riggins coming on the blitz, and Tennessee was ready for it. It is the perfect call against the blitz, particularly when you get a couple of guys out in front of the running back. Time has been called with 29 seconds to go in the first half. Auburn leads 10-3. Johnny Major's Tennessee team has played well. They're in the ball game at 10-3. How important is the score of any kind here? Well, thus far this year, they have not really been too close at halftime. This is a very important series for them. They have one timeout with 30 seconds left. Now, they're thinking, they got to be thinking touchdown because of the concern about the kicker. But even if you can't get the ball in the end zone, you need to get three points to have that emotional lift to accomplish all your first-half goals. A four, three wide receiver set. Two come wide right. The wide side of the field, and now Auburn has called timeout. Interesting strategy by Pat Dye. He wanted to see what formation that Tennessee was going to come out in. While we have a moment, let's take a look at both these two fine schools, Tennessee and Auburn. Coming up, the college football report, the Prudential College Report at halftime. Troy Aikman live with Jim Nance and George Carlin's report on football at MIT. Now, three wide receivers set again on first and 10. 10-3 10 Auburn leads at 27 seconds to go before the half. A blitz coming by Auburn, and Francis has to hurry to get rid of the ball. It's incomplete. Alvin Harper makes the catch, but he is out of bounds when he does so. We're in Jordan-Hare Stadium, Auburn, Alabama, southeast corner of the state of Alabama. 85,000-plus on hand. Vern Lundquist along with Pat Hayden here in Auburn. The important SEC game, Tennessee 0-3 for the year, Auburn 2-0 and ranked right fourth in the country. But it's been played on even terms in the first half. Second and ten. And again, the two tiny mites come wide right, Woods and Cleveland. Harper's at the top of your screen. Francis safety valve, and he gets out of bounds at the 21-yard line, stopping the clock with 18 seconds to go. That's the tight end, Nate Middlebrooks, as Quentin Riggins made the tackle. And Jeff Francis did a terrific thing there in not forcing the ball, was trying to get the ball downfield. The guy wasn't open. He didn't take the sack, dumped the ball off to his tight end, and now gives it perhaps his field goal kicker a little more room to kick the field goal if they have to do that. 18 seconds to go. It will be third and five 
from the 20. So Tennessee is looking at a 37-yard field goal effort. If this play doesn't gain an inch. Third and six officially. Good protection in the end zone. Incomplete. Intended for Harper, defended by Wiley. John Wiley, the sophomore from Opelika, Alabama, nine miles down the road. Tennessee was hoping for a height mismatch. Harper is 6'3", Wiley only six feet. And what they tried to do was get the ball high. This ball was a little bit underthrown. Had he thrown the ball a little bit farther, Harper had a chance to go up and get it. But it was underthrown and it was well played by Wiley. Chip McCallum is 0 for the season outside of 40 yards or 30 yards. This will be officially a 38-yard kick. That might be there. He got it. And that is a tremendous emotional lift for the Volunteers before they go into halftime. Down only by four points. 38-yard field goal for Chip McCallum, the freshman from Marietta, Georgia, and the lead is shaved to four with seven seconds to go. Don't know that Tracy Rucker thought he was going to get involved in this kind of a tussle this afternoon. So remember, we talked to Pat, Pat Dye, and he was just so concerned about this Tennessee team in these kind of circumstances. How many times have head coaches seen their team favored by 20 points, come into a, a game where they're playing a team that hasn't won a game, and they're in a dogfight? What it's going to take at halftime for Auburn, I think, to come out and try to start, start dominating, I think they're really going to have to be a lot more physical on offense, run the ball off tackle. They've got a good, strong offensive line. They're going to have to try to take it to the Tennessee defense. That Dyes team has gotten two big plays to set up their scores. A 75-yard first quarter touchdown pass from Slack to right, and then a 60-yard James Joseph run, which set up a field goal, thus accounting for the 10 Auburn points. Tennessee has moved the ball on longer drives and taken much more time. College football continues a week from today. Another SEC battle, an important one. As the Florida Gators are at home in Gainesville against LSU. That's live at 2.30, and Brent Musburger back with Pat Hayden a week from today. Brent, as we said, is taking the day off to be with his son at the Cincinnati Miami of Ohio. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing Tommy Hodgson, the quarterback at LSU, and of course Emmett Smith. Hodgson's off to a terrific start for LSU. This one goes deep, bounces at the 17. Picked up by James Joseph. And he's knocked down at the 28-yard line. Tackle made by Cezanne Bradley, number 40. And that'll do it for halftime. That's the end of the first half with a score. Auburn 10 and Tennessee 6. The big play of the first half. Reggie Slack to Alexander Wright, 75 yards. Well thrown right out in front of the receiver. Used his hands. And he was off to the races. Jim Nance back with College Football Report after this message and word from your local station. For a very feisty Tennessee volunteer team, two field goals by Tennessee and Auburn with two big plays, one a touchdown and the other to set up a field goal. Volunteers off to an 0-3 start. If they lose today, it will tie their worst start ever. But they have played quite well in the first half, trailing as they do now by only a count of 10 to 6. In case you're wondering, uh, the chill is not in the air, and autumn has not come to the Southland. Vern Lundquist and Pat Hayden and the volunteer defense, so suspect Pat has played really well in the first half. Well, you know, defense, I think, is so much of attitude, and there's just a whole different attitude on this defense in this game. And you're going to see great team defense and some individual performances. Watch the team defense. Watch Reggie Slack as he runs the naked bootleg. You're going to see four or five white jerseys around him. And when I think of Tennessee defense, that's what I think of. And there's great individual performances as well. Keith DeLong, number 33, has really had a terrific first half. He is the leader of this defense, and he's going to need to continue that well on to the second half. Keith DeLong, the senior from Lawrence, Kansas, is the leading tackler for Tennessee in the first half with seven. Brian Kimbrough follows with six, and Ernest Fields with four. Halftime, and we'll be right back after this message. Southeastern Conference football from Auburn, Alabama, 85,000 plus on hand. Second half underway. Chris Johnson kicks it off for Auburn. 
Anthony Morgan will take it at the 10 for Tennessee. Excellent return. Short kicks have been returned. Good field position. Moments ago, Pat O'Brien had a chance to chat with Tennessee coach Johnny Majors. Coach, you have to be proud of your defense. Well, Pat, I think this is the best the defense has played thus far uh, during the season. Uh, with that three big plays, uh, you know, uh, that's part of football. That gives us three big plays where we're ahead of the ball game, but we aren't. I think we fought them hard, uh, played very well, except the uh, two big passes and one long run. If you take away those two passes and a run, here's the toss. Reggie Cobb, fumble, Auburn ball. Tracy Rucker caused it. Alvin Mitchell gets it. The Auburn defense has always come up with big plays since Pat Dye has been here. Watch 74. That's Tracy Rocker. He's the one who's going to penetrate here and cause the fumble. And then number 48, Alvin Mitchell, to his left, is going to make the recovery. He fights through the man, really just strips the ball, and then there's 48, Alvin Mitchell, making up the heads-up play. Good team defense. Turnover is even at one and one. Alvin Mitchell, the senior from Venice, Florida, with the fumble recovery. Cross to Joseph goes left. Inside the 25 to the 22. Martin Williams, the nose tackle, makes the grab. And another test today for this Tennessee defense. They're feeling good going into halftime. Their offense comes out and turns the ball over. It's right back on the defense. They have to stop the Auburn offense now. From the 22, second and four. Officially second and five. Vincent Harris. Look at the leg drive, Pat. Statistically at half with the score 10-6. Here's the way the two teams matched up. The rushing yards, Auburn 116 to 44. 75 came on, or 60 rather, came on one run. And the passing yardage 142 to 129. 75 of those yards for a touchdown. The total 258 to 173. And as you heard Johnny Majors tell Pat O'Brien, if you take away three big plays, they might have been ahead. Those take away those three, and here's the first down for Auburn. And the Tigers had 89 yards of offense in the first half. But they have done very well. Now, that's an inflated average because of Joseph's 75-yard run. And Auburn has done a very nice job on first down. They've gotten themselves usually four or five, six yards on first down. Wagan breaks wide to the left side. Alexander Wright is wide right. James Joseph cracks as he gets to the line of scrimmage. Wow, well, he hit by number 66, Martin Williams, the nose tackle. All 280 pounds of him. He's over the center. He gets great leverage. He's only 6'1", 280 pounds. And then what that allows a guy to do over the center is get some leverage. He runs right through the guard and is there to make the pop on James Joseph. Good play by Williams. Auburn goes with four wide receivers on second down and long. Slack, man in the slot. Greg Taylor, first and goal at the three. What I like about this Auburn passing attack that Pat Sullivan has really put in for Auburn is they can go way downfield, which they have a couple times to Alexander Wright, but they can also have the patience to dump the ball off short as they did right there to Taylor. That's a gain of 13 yards. It'll be first and goal from the four now. 12.55 to go. Fumble by Cobb to open the second half. And here comes the Tiger package. That's what they call this unbalanced line to the left. And the wishbone formation. They come right. Talk a little bit about this offensive scheme they use, Pat, with the load to the left-hand side. What they're going to do, your quarterback, Reggie Slack, comes up. You see there's the tight end here, and there is two tackles. Both the tackles come over here. This is ordinarily the tight end right here. This time, they come back right back here, but good, again, team defense for the ones that stop the running back right there, Joseph. And that's a formation in which the offense checks with Slack ordinarily when they get to the line of scrimmage, right? It's an easy call for me. He comes up to the line of scrimmage. He looks to his right. If there are four players to the right, he'll run the ball to the left, to the right. If there's five there, he runs the other way. 
No Tiger package on second and goal. Instead, they go with four wide receivers. Black, three-step drop, drills it. Caught, shorted. Oh, touchdown. Freddie Wigan. Although he came back out to the one-yard line, as long as the ball crosses the plane of the end zone, it's a touchdown. is the fifth touchdown toss for Reggie Slack this season. Lynn Lyle is on to try the extra point. High snap. Kick is up and good. Reggie Slack has really been accurate. His balls are easy to catch because they're right at the numbers. He drills this ball right there, easy for Wigan to catch. Wigan to catch. His feet were in, but it's the ball that is really the key, not the feet here. The ball has got to cross the plane. It's not a matter of his feet. Thus, Tennessee fans are wondering, did he or didn't he? But it counts. Two things have to happen for this touchdown to be called a touchdown. The, the receiver has to catch the ball, of course, and the ball has to cross the plane. There's the goal line. The ball is caught right there by Wagan, and that's a good call by the official. That's a touchdown. Ball was in the end zone. Chris Johnson will kick off. Anthony Morgan waits for it. 17 to 6. Morgan comes up after the short kick and takes it at the 16. Number 42. That's an eight-yard return. Good shot. Now, Tennessee has had some success so far on the kickoff returns. That not that time. Terrific coverage by Auburn. And now the Volunteers back on offense. They moved the ball under Jeff Francis quite well in the first half. Total of 173 yards. Francis 12 of 17 for 129. But had to settle for field goal. And they now trail by their largest margin of the game, the 11, after the 27-yard drive. To the fullback. Roland pulls. A flag is down. Tackle made by Tracy Rocker, number 74. No gain. No gain if the play stands. A holding call against the Volunteers. I think Tennessee, Vern, puts more pressure on their quarterback, more responsibility on the quarterback than any team in the Southeastern Conference. They give him, they signal in two plays for him to call. He'll get in the huddle, call those two plays. He comes to the line of scrimmage, decides which one he's going to use at the line of scrimmage takes the ball from center and has to execute. All that has to happen in 25 seconds. That's a lot for a college quarterback. That is a strain, I would think, on the quarterback. You like that idea? Well, when you have a guy like Jeff Francis, he's a bright guy. He's very capable of handling it. But you have to be experienced. You have to be in the system for a couple of years. And Francis is a fifth-year senior from Mount Prospect, Illinois. Johnny Majors looks on now. And Francis brings him to the line. First and 20. 11.27 to go. Third quarter. Play fake. Pressure. Reggie Cobb, fumble, Auburn ball. Carlo Cheatham, senior from Sheffield, Alabama, made the hit and the recovery, and Reggie Cobb is still down. And this is not Reggie Cobb's fault. This is Arlo, all Carlo Cheatham. He read the screen beautifully, he was playing in his zone, saw it the whole way, and it was going full speed when he hit Cobb, causing the fumble. Carlo Cheatham has not played this year because of an injury. And Reggie Cobb gets some assistance to the volunteer bench. You would not think it to watch him in action, but Carlo Cheatham is a very quiet man. His first two years at Auburn, the press guide listed him as Carlos with an S. Only in his junior year did he go to David Housel and say, fellas, my name is Carlo, C-A-R-L-O. Thank you. High formation. Cross to the right. James Joseph to the three. Play 
play should have been dropped for a loss, but Vincent Harris, the fullback, blocked about three volunteers, and that allowed Joseph to stretch it out and pick up a couple of yards. Johnny Major's team error-free in the first half, not here. Watch Harris, the fullback right there. He's going to block really about two or three guys. They get tripped up on him, and that allowed uh, Joseph to create a positive play out of a negative one. Second down and goal. Harris up the middle. Flag is down on the far side of the field. If Tennessee is going to keep this game from getting out of hand. They've got to make a goal line stand here and force a field goal attempt. And Pat, they did do that in the first half. They forced a field goal that made it 10 to 3 at the time. This is against Auburn. Back to the nine. They got legal position. So Joseph comes out. The volunteers make some defensive changes now, and Auburn will go with four wide receivers. Shane Wasden, number eight, and Freddie Wagan. They go to the left as Pat Dye looks on. Alexander Wright and Greg Taylor come to the right side. And Harris is behind Reggie Slack. But out of bounds at the one. It's Greg Taylor tackled by Brian Kimbrough. The idea is to stretch the defense, bring one receiver on your side deep, and the other receiver runs right underneath him short. The ball is well-timed and thrown, again, right in the numbers. That's an easy ball to catch. The Taylor tries to dive over the end zone. Third and goal from the one. 10-15 to go in the third quarter. Biggest play for the Tennessee defense thus far this year. Power eye formation. Touchdown. couple of touchdowns. Miles' kick is up and through, and just like that, in the first four minutes and 47 seconds of the third quarter, Auburn has scored 14 points. Harris gets it from a yard out, and the fourth-ranked Tigers are on the roll. Long, who's played well all day long, has the play here for the fullback, Harris. He's in position, but down here, you know the, the man is going to jump high. You have to go a little bit higher. The long goes too low, and Harris is over the top. And the one-yard touchdown plunge gives Auburn a 24-6 lead. 10-13, still remaining third quarter. So, successive fumbles by the Auburn offense, recovered by, rather, the Tennessee offense. And now Chris Johnson's kick. Anthony Morgan, again, a short kick. Taking it to 11. And out to the 28-yard line. Big day, National Football League on CBS tomorrow. It begins with the NFL today at 12.30 Eastern time. Most of you watch Chicago Green Bay. Atlanta will be at Dallas. And also on the early menu, Philadelphia, Minnesota. That's a big game early in the season. Tampa Bay visits New Orleans. Most of you around the country will watch the undefeated Rams take on the Giants in New York in the second half of the doubleheader. 49ers with a big game at Seattle tomorrow. And the Washington Redskins, without Doug Williams, take on the Phoenix Cardinals. Vando Davis, Keith Tension in the backfield. The flip out left side. And that's Alvin Harper, the sophomore from Fort Cruz, Florida, who makes the catch. Tackle made by John Wiley, number nine. And well, Tennessee has really had a tough start this half. The two fumbles really weren't bad execution on offense. I think it was just terrific defense by the Auburn uh, hitters. They came up and really forced the fumbles. But Vern is up to Jeff Francis right now to make sure his teammates don't quit. He can be a good leader even when you're down like this. Second down and short, handoff left. That should be enough for the first down. Let's go to Jim Nance in New York for this update. 
Laverne, Florida State's on the board against Michigan State. Chip Ferguson rolling right, hits Lawrence Dossey with a touchdown. Seminoles driving again in the first quarter, and, hold your breath, Wisconsin leads Miami 3-0 in the second quarter. And the Yankees have now beaten Boston in the ninth, 9-4. Let's go back to Vernon Pat. 5-4 Yankees. Jimmy, if you think I'm counting Miami out against Wisconsin <laughs> in the second quarter, you're talking to the wrong Swede. Four. <laughs> we learned something last week, all of us around the country. Yeah. Here's the stretch of the chain. And it is the Tennessee Quartet. One of the things Jeff Francis told us Thursday in Knoxville I found interesting. That he said, I need to start playing like a fifth-year senior. I need to remember and play like the score is nothing-nothing and think in terms of getting one first down, then the next first down, and then the next first down. That's exactly right. And not worrying about being 0-3. He's got to exert himself as a leader, which I think he has throughout the last couple of years at Tennessee. Three wide receiver set. Francis back. Too high. Incomplete. And he had the man open. It was Terrence Cleveland. Number four, Terrence Cleveland. It's one of the few bad balls that Jeff Francis has thrown. He's a very accurate thrower. Completes about 60% of his passes. has for two years. And part of it's the system that Walt Harris has installed here at Tennessee. My gracious, your alma mater is doing well. Hey, Rodney Pete's for real out there at uh, Southern Cal. Believe me. Ohio State bouncing back after a loss last week. And look at West Virginia. Second down and 10, Tennessee. They trail 24-6. Francis in trouble. Ron Stallworth. And Jeff Francis does a mini Luganus and gets about four <laughs> yards with the dive. And the Russian judge, 3.2. <laughs> You're right. Again, it's frustrating when you're a defensive lineman trying to sack Jeff Francis because he takes short drops and then steps up into the pocket, and it's really hard to get to him. This is a patchwork offensive line working in front of Francis. Two injuries in the first half. Robinson and Stewart have not come back. Third and 11. Fumble, Auburn ball. No. That should have been a pass. He was trying to throw that ball, and it was deflected. And there is, of course, no instant replay in college basketball. You're going to see Jeff Francis. He is going to scramble. I think he was trying to dump this ball and throw it. No, it was. He didn't. He didn't get rid of it. It was a fumble. Good call by the official. It was number 90, Brian Smith, who really got there and took the ball right out of his hands. And then Steve Brown recovered. Three possessions, three fumbles for Tennessee. Here in the second half, 8.36 to go, third quarter. And this is putting a terrific amount of pressure on a very young Tennessee defense. Black, caught. Alexander right at the 31, first down. Tackle made by Preston Warren, number 21, the sophomore line uh, cornerback. Reggie Slack has a big time arm. And remember, right down here, it's beating them deep. This time, he's going to run way down and run the out cut. And if you're a defensive back, you have to be concerned with right speed. This was set up beautifully. They've thrown the ball to right deep a couple of times. This time, the deep out and a well-thrown ball. First down and 10, Auburn. 24 to 6, they lead it. Joseph in motion. Four-man rush for Tennessee, James Joseph makes the catch, and he's got the ball at the 25-yard line. Joseph trying to take his place in the company of great running backs who have played here at Auburn. You think of Bo Jackson, William Andrews, Lionel James, and out of them all, who does this man idolize? Pat Hayden. <laughs> I wouldn't say, he said he saw me. I'm not sure he idolized me. He I'll said... put the words in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Reggie Slack, 11 of 13. Two touchdowns already. Joseph flag down. And Joseph barely caught. There's a flag on the play. That might be holding. That is holding. There's a man I give a lot of credit to, Pat Dye, showing great flexibility. He told us this week that he felt that he still could win eight or nine games running the wishbone, but he felt in this conference you had to throw the football. And it's an offense that he's really uncomfortable in, so we brought in Pat Sullivan and some other coaches. And he has really been able to change. A lot of coaches wouldn't run an offense they're not comfortable with. As a matter of fact, he told us he had a conversation with Barry Switzer, who is still running the wishbone. Barry thought about changing at one time, 
after Pat Dye went out of the wishbone and went to the multiple formation, Switzer called it. And he said, I really admire your, your fortitude in sticking with the change. And Dye has done it successfully. Second and 14, Pike is down. Auburn, of course, not the only school that has gone more to a passing game in the last decade, Pat. Well, I think you're finding it all over the country, but I think this is a telling statistic as you see over the years they're throwing the ball more and more, and they've had some very talented quarterbacks, including this year, to watching two of them today, and next week we get to see Tommy Hodgson. But there's good quarterbacks throughout the ACC. That was a five-yard procedure penalty against Auburn, and as a result, they've got second in the bunch. Second and 19, no blitz. Slack. With time, a lot of time. Wiggles free and picks up six or seven. He perhaps should not have uh, should not have had. Charles McCray makes the tackle. The Irish are rolling over Purdue. And Reggie Ho, one of our favorite guys. Clemson over Georgia Tech. That's a final. How about this finish? Rutgers. That's another big win, second one for them this year. And Dick Anderson, who's the head coach of Rutgers, beats his old head coach, uh, Joe Paterno, who coached underneath him there. Michigan now one and two. Four wide receivers, third as well. Blitz coming from Tennessee. They almost got him. Tony Nelson was there, but look at Wigan makes the catch. Perfect execution. to tell you that I am incredibly impressed with Reggie's black accuracy. Every ball has been catchable. He hasn't thrown a bad ball. Watch this one. Again, he's under duress. Perfect fundamentals. Doesn't waste any motion. He's got guys hanging all over him. And still, the ball is right there. Easy for Wagan to make the catch. Every ball is right at the numbers. Big pressure. It was number six, Tony Nelson, who is the free safety, who put the blitz on. First and goal again. This time at the nine-yard line. Taylor in motion. Slack has missed only two today. Fires it. Caught by Joseph out of bounds at the three-yard line. Preston Warren defending. Reggie Slack putting on a show here in the second half. I think one of Reggie Slack's greatest attributes as a quarterback is that he is really even-tempered. He doesn't get too high when things are going well. He doesn't get low when things are going badly. That's important for a quarterback. And he gives a lot of credit to his work with Pat Sullivan, doesn't he? Pat Sullivan has spent a lot of time working on good old-fashioned fundamentals with Reggie Slack. Just dropping back, keeping the ball high, no wasted motion. It's really paid off. And here is the Tiger package, the unbalanced line to the left. They play fake. Slack rolls out. Will he make it? Yes. For the extra point three fumbles have been converted into three touchdowns in the first nine minutes of the third quarter watch the tiger package the unbalanced line strength to the left top of the screen ordinarily when you're a linebacker you love to see the quarterback come out there one-on-one -on -one, except when it's a guy like reggie slack 200 and some odd pounds 62 and he can break some tackles 541 to go third quarter it's all auburn Given two smiles to Pat Hayden, MIT and Southern Cal in the same afternoon. A lot of those guys from MIT know what high times the speed of light is. <laughs> A change in the kickoff man for Auburn, Chris Dickinson, this time, and he may keep the job. That's the first kickoff. It's gone into the goal line, and it'll be a touchback for the Volunteers. Well, warm afternoon, big crowd. Somewhere in this crowd of 85,000 is our Pat O'Brien. Let's find out where that might be. Well, it may be warm down in the field, but I'm up in an air-conditioned box, box number 320, where about 20 people are enjoying the ball game this afternoon. It's a little warm down there, but it's kind of comfortable up here where they have three monitors, made service food. Jimmy Long, this is your box. This is a way to watch football, isn't it? Man, you better believe it. <laughs> it is great. How do you think Vern and Pat are doing? Well, short of fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to them. All right, how much do you pay to get in there, Pat? 
And that was nearly another fumble as the Volunteers have one yard in this half offensively. Keith Davis with that carry. And give some credit to Wayne Hall, the defensive coordinator for Auburn. He coaches again that defensive line. And he sets the defensive game plan each week. Again, he wanted his guys to be physical and aggressive. That's what they've been, particularly here in the second half. First time in this half that Tennessee has had a second down play. And Keith Davis goes over left tackle into the arms of Ron Stallworth. It's hard to imagine that Ron Stallworth, who is 6'5 and 258, uh, his mother was concerned about him playing. We didn't want him to play football, and actually he didn't play until the ninth grade. She was afraid that he was going to get hurt. He's doing much, most of the hurting now. We've talked to those. Well, we'll get back to it after this play. It's going to be first down and 10, Tennessee now. Option play. Tracy Walker. this afternoon he's been a spectator most of the season because they've been ahead and they've been running away from him a lot watch how he gets right through the man in front of him he's got tremendous arm strength and see how low he gets nice little stunt throws off the fullback and then that's easy pickings when you have a quarterback 13 tackles today he had two tackles for the season in the first two games here's francis back Way back. Greg Ogletree, number 94. It's all falling apart for the Tennessee line. Again, they lost two starters in the first quarter. Phil Stewart, Ray Robinson. They've got a left guard, Patrick Lenore, who was a member of the defensive line. He's a redshirt freshman, so they really have a patchwork bunch up front. And the depth is not there. Even, even before the injury path, they were very thin. And on a hot day like that, it, that is very telling as you, as you close out the third and fourth quarter. Third and 20. Francis sacked again. Anthony Judge and Ron Stallworth. Ron Stallworth probably didn't get as much publicity as Benji Rowland and Tracy Rocker, but did a terrific job there. And here's the punt by Kent Elmore. Shane Wasden is back to return it for the first time. And he's knocked down to the 35-yard line. 49-yard punt, two on the return. Reggie Slack has been superb in this ball game. 13 of 15, 215 yards. How about his pass distribution? Well, again, he's done a nice job of throwing the ball downfield, dumping the ball deep. He's thrown a couple of deep ones to right. As you can see, they're over the middle on both sides. Again, he's using the whole field. And then he's hit his back's coming out of the backfield and some shorter routes underneath the coverage to his wide receivers. Really spread it around. 7-7 seven seven for 73 yards in this half, and both touchdowns. Lobs it deep, almost picked off. Preston Warren, who has two already this year, just about grabbed his third. Yeah, that was the first bad throw we've seen at a slack, but is it my imagination, or is he playing the position of quarterback about as calmly and nonchalantly as you can? Here's the way they've scored by quarters, those 21 points set up by three fumble recoveries by the Auburn defense. Two touchdowns in the air, one on the ground. Reggie Slack, the junior out of Milton, Florida, second and 10, 31 to six, Auburn leads it. Final three minutes, draw play, James Joseph, ankle tackle. Oh no, the fans are doing the wave. I thought they outlawed that. I had hoped they had. <laughs> and it's a weak wave. It sure is. <laughs> Mercifully. Third and eight. Auburn four of seven on third down conversions. Four wide receivers. Greg Taylor wide open across the middle. Oh. And he ran back. He had the first down. And committed the cardinal sin of uh, 
running away from the first down marker. And he will hear about that tomorrow. Actually advance past the marker. Watch the slot receiver again. What they do is a nice job of bringing the guys down here. The marker's right over here. He has the first down, then goes back and gets caught sh short of the first down. Watch the end of it and keep this stat in mind. This is the second time all year that the Tennessee defense has held the team to three plays and a punt. That has been a major part of the problem. And this is only the second time they've forced a punt after three downs. Reggie Slack, very even-tempered. His coach, Pat Dye, says it's uncanny how evenly dispositioned he is. Reggie Slack talked about that. On the field, I think it really helps uh, to be um, on an even keel. Uh, you know, when things get really wild out there on the field, uh, the teammates look for someone who's uh, going to keep their composure and, and get things rolling again. Uh, so I think uh, my attitude, uh, as far as that concerned, is really helpful. Certainly has been today. They lead it 31 to 6. 94 seconds to go. Third quarter fumble. Andy Kelly is in at quarterback now. The freshman from Dayton, Ohio. And I don't know whether that's it for Jeff Francis or not. South Carolina knocks off Georgia. 23-10. Alabama leading Vandy. And Florida over Mississippi State. Andy Kelly came on in relief last week and was 4 of 7 for 28 yards. He's a 6'2", 194-pound freshman. And Keith Davis from the carry there. Kelly, as you mentioned, is a young player in this system, and because the system at Tennessee is complicated, it takes a while to develop. There's a lot of audibles. We've talked about how much responsibility Tennessee puts on the quarterback. He's a talented guy with a big arm, but it's going to take a couple of years in the system before he can really beat the guy. Andy Kelly, those four of seven passes he completed in the one game in which he's played, two of those were deliberate throwaways, so he's really four out of five. Most of them short passes. Tennessee has had problems this afternoon on third down conversion to Big Wadir. Play fake. Kelly, that's nearly a safety. He's down at the one. Tracy Rocker. Interesting, Wayne Hall said about Tracy Rocker when people started wondering about the two tackles he had in two games, said, don't you worry. Tracy Rocker will be there when the season is over. Well, he didn't wait for the season to be over. When the lights go on, Tracy Rocker has, knows how to play. Again, beat the tackle very, very quickly upfield. Nearly a safety. Elmore is on the punt, but he'll have to wait a couple of minutes to make a 99-yard run. 13 tackles for Rocker. That's the end of the quarter. CBS Sports returns. That's this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports presents College Football. Today's CFA game is sponsored by the Heartbeat of America, today's Chevrolet. Allstate, for home, auto, and life insurance, you're in good hands with Allstate. And by Michelob. Michelob is a proud sponsor of the 1988 U.S. Olympic team. 31-6 as we start quarter number four, Vern Lundquist and Pat Hayden. Ken no more on the punt. And the Tennessee problems have uh, have not been overcome. They're punting from deep in their own end of the field, the two-yard line. There is Jeff Francis, who hit 9 of 9 in the first half, but is now 14 of 20. He's given way to Andy Kelly. Shane Watson waits for this punt from Elmore at the 40-yard line. That's a nice punt by Elmore. Watson at the 47. And he's down at the 37-yard line. Coming up tomorrow, the National Football League on CBS. It all begins with the NFL today. Brent will be back in the studio for that. Then Chicago against Green Bay leads the first game. Others will see Atlanta against Dallas. Others of you watch Philadelphia and Minnesota. And we complete the menu in the first go-round with Tampa Bay and New Orleans. And the second half of our doubleheader on CBS, big game early in the season. The Rams against the Giants. The 49ers are at Seattle. And the Washington Redskins with Mark Griffin, the starter, go to Phoenix. First and ten. Auburn with a 31-6 lead. Stacy Stanley, number 32, gets the handoff, and Marion Hobby makes the tackle. 
One of the few times we've seen in the second half where a defensive lineman for Tennessee has really shed the blocker and been able to make the tackle at or near the close uh, the line of scrimmage. Marion Hobby, their best defensive lineman, did it there. See Shazan Bradley, number 40, still in. Ernest Fields, number 23, and there is Marion Hobby who made the tackle. Second down and eight. Wagan starts in motion, the fifth-year senior. Toss to the right, Stacy Danley. Cuts it back nicely and gets to the 30-yard line before the tackle is made. Right now, let's go back and get an update from Jim Nance in New York. Burn a wild and important one in the whack. Wyoming has come back from 21 down to tie it. Randy Welniak to Freddie Doucette, all tied at 38 with 3.40 to go in the game. Let's go back to Vernon Tech. Uh, Wyoming, of course, with a big win to open the season over Brigham Young. And now coming back against Air Force. Our score is 31-6, 13-39 to go in the ballgame. They go to the weak side of the field, and Stacy Danley might have enough for the first down. See where the spot is. Well, they've had problems defensively. This team played so well in the first half, and then were called upon to defend with poor field position in the third quarter. Three fumbles. That is the offense, not the defense. That's Keith Davis talking. Senior leadership from Keith Davis. He touched Baird in the 73. And you need guys like that on your team in games like that. I give Keith Davis an awful lot of credit trying to keep his teammates up. Fourth and one, and Auburn will go for it. Out of the Tiger formation, first down. You know, there's good news and bad news if you're a Tennessee fan and about this defense, although they're having some rough moments early in the year. They're a young team. It's a team that's going to get better as the year goes on, and of course next year and a couple of years down the road, it could be a very good defensive team. They're going to have to take their lumps this year. First and ten, Auburn. Stanley comes out of the lineup. Alex Strong is in, number 40. And Henry Love, a freshman. Henry Love, Henry Love, widely recruited, true freshman running back, number 23. He had a big game in the second half last week in the win over Kansas. Johnny Majors has never been 0-3 as a coach. Pittsburgh or Tennessee. And Tennessee has not been 0-4 since 1962. Yeah, I think Johnny Major said an interesting thing this week. He said, you can't take out your frustrations on your 18 and 19-year-old kids. Second down. Greg Taylor in motion. That's a loss back at the 20. Stacy Danley. As Cedric Klein, number 30, comes up and makes the tackle. There's Klein, number 30, junior out of Loudoun, Tennessee. They're playing with a very sore shoulder, Klein is. This was a competitive ball game at halftime, 10-6. On the first series of the third quarter, Tennessee fumbled at the 27. Auburn took it in. Next possession, they fumbled at the nine. Auburn took it in. And then they fumbled again. Auburn took it in. Here's Flack. Almost picked off it is. Intercepted. Cedric Klein, who just made a tackle on the running play, gets his first interception of 1988. And give Cedric Klein, and really this Tennessee defense some credit. They've been out there an awful long time today. The ball was underthrown by Flack, and that gave Klein time to make up the difference and make the nice interception. And that brings the volunteer offense back onto the field. They've got the ball at the 14-yard line. Jeff Francis is back in at quarterback. So a rest for one series, and Francis is back in there, the 50-year senior. Turnover is now 3-2. and two. He's got John Rollins at fullback, and Rollins gets the handoff and a couple of yards. If you want a personification of persistence, how about John Rollins as an example? Let's tell you about this young man. Grew up in Knoxville, loved the University of Tennessee and wanted to play there. His high school team went 2-8 and eight and 0-10 and his last two years. No scholarship. He went to Tennessee Military Institute to try and play. No scholarship. He played at Mars Hill, an NAIA school in North Carolina, for one year. 
dropped out, transferred to Tennessee, sat out a year, became academically ineligible for another year, and finally, a year ago August, finally, in the summer of 87, was offered a scholarship and started in the kickoff classic as a tight end. He said he called his dad, who's a plumbing contractor in Knoxville, broke into tears. He was so happy. And now he's been asked to fulfill the role at fullback. But if you want a guy who's a tenacious young man, I can think of no better example than John Rawls. I really had admiration for guys like that. You know, he's really emotional about Tennessee. Even this week, talking about the school and his team, he was nearly in tears. Rawls is number 85 in the backfield. Here's Jeff Francis. He's safe. Catch is made at the 14 yard line. Anthony Morgan makes the catch, or Keith Benson rather. And Smokey Hodge makes the tackle. Miami of Florida. Told you not to give up on him. Ohio State now leading by just one at the half. And Florida State leading by 10. How about Michigan State? How about the whole Big Ten? It's unbelievable. West Virginia is one of those surprise teams. You know, every year in college football, there seems to be a Cinderella team. I think West Virginia is the team this year. Third and ten. Four-man rush. Francis delivers the ball. That will not be enough for the first down, I do not believe. Nope. Yard short. Alvin Harper with the catch, and Pat O'Brien down there somewhere. Patrick? All right, Vern, thank you. One of the more confusing mascot stories in the country, the Auburn Tigers mascot is an eagle. This is War Eagle, the sixth one they've had, and they used to feed this eagle two rats on game day, but they stopped doing that. They feed them ground-up horse meat. I guess they couldn't find any volunteers. Let's go back upstairs. Ooh, <laughs> no pun intended, I know. No, not at all. He wrote that in his room last night. Wasden back to return the punt of Kent Elmore. Wasden goes right. And gets back up to 44. Oh, Patrick O'Brien, 37-yard punt. Auburn leads 31-6. to six. They love barbecue, catfish, and football. Horse meat. I guess they couldn't find any volunteers. Let's go back upstairs. Ooh, <laughs> no pun intended, I know. No, not at all. He wrote that in his room last night. Wasden back to return the punt of Kent Elmore. Wasden goes right. And gets back up to 44. Oh, Patrick O'Brien, 37-yard punt. Auburn leads 31-6. to six. They love barbecue, catfish, and football. 